what's up guys first i wanted to say thanks for checking out my channel uh i know i'm new here used to have a channel called boozer tech and uh, started back up with that name this time i had uh quite a few hundred subscribers and was moving on up and uh youtube banned my account for showing boobies basically on dead or alive 5 so i won't be doing that this time around <laughs> But uh, anyways, uh, this is the new channel, and uh, I just changed the name today to that Crossfire guy. So I know there's not a lot of information out there on Crossfire, and that's what I want to do on this channel is provide people with correct information about Crossfire, how to set it up, make sure it's working correctly, and do away with a lot of myths and uh, people just trash talking it saying that it doesn't work or it's too expensive or blah 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 so this is all my personal opinion you know this is uh some some of the stuff that i give you will be facts other things are just my personal opinion in my personal opinion i think crossfire is moving forward as well as DirectX 12 and uh, mgpu some of the MGPU games that show that it works very well is Deus Ex Mankind Divided, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, um, Hitman, the newest released one, as well as uh, the new Sniper Elite version 4 actually has a 100% scaling. Uh, scaling means how much of the second card that it uses uh, versus one card. In that game in particular, it uses 100%, so you get double, exactly double the performance of a single card. This is a newer released game. This is for developers that want to use it, uh, developers that aren't lazy, who aren't hooked on selling uh, only AMD or only NVIDIA products, you know, uh, endorsements with their game, getting paid for slapping nvidia all over it and game works uh, then this is the way of the future when these developers use this and utilize it the results are freaking amazing so um anyways moving away from those those are the four mgpu games uh that i know of that work well uh, i guess ashes of the singularity too uh but i don't really play that game so uh, I'm not going to comment on the performance of it at all because I haven't actually tested it maybe that's something else I will do because uh, I do like to test everything so you guys can I'm not going to show um, performance or benchmarks in this video I'm going to talk about settings profiles things that you need to make sure are set up to make sure that your crossfire is working correctly um, this is with a set of uh, MSI rx 580 game and x uh, each one is eight gigabyte uh, first of all one thing you guys need to know is that in crossfire you only get to use the eight gigabyte from one card uh, it does not double them up you don't get 16 gigabyte of memory as you can see uh, it shows that there is only 8192 megabyte which would be eight gigabyte um, utilized when you're in crossfire uh, now directx 12 is actually able to utilize um, the other eight gigabyte so that's interesting uh, it hasn't really been done very well yet but you know this we're talking about uh, stuff in the future that could happen uh, right now I want to talk about you know how do you want to spend your money now um, if you've already spent the money here's how to get it set up properly and so on and so forth so we are on the Radeon software version, drivers 17.4.4. Everything is up to date. Um, I'm on a FX8370. I have it overclocked to uh, 4.7 gigahertz, I believe, right now. Uh, most of the time we're running at 4.8, but I've just recently um, built this system inside of a Core P3 open case, so I'm kind of checking temperatures right now and uh you know seeing how things are going to work which i've actually been very impressed with it so 
anyways uh, I can do a whole nother video on overclocking your processor if you need any help with that or your RAM and settings and timings and so on and so forth and uh, but we'll make a whole nother video about that so back to crossfire okay so here's your Radeon settings never mind afterburner and uh, tech power up GPU Z there uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna blow this up so you can see everything and uh, you go over to your gaming tab here uh, if you want to use ReLive, you can use ReLive. Uh, it's what I'm recording with right now. I think it works pretty well. Um, I used to have a GTX 970. I will say that NVIDIA Shadow Play was a lot smoother, easier to use, and not as resource heavy as ReLive. With ReLive, when I'm recording 1440p games at 60 frames per second, I usually lose uh, somewhere between 5 to 10 frames per second and if I'm recording at uh, a game at 4k I only record at um, 1440p because if I try to do 4k like right now I'm at uh, 1080 30 MB per second because uh, and 30 frames per second because I'm just recording a desktop usually I would have this set to 1440p 30 MB per second and um, 60 frames per second over here for your recording frames per second. If I do set it up to 4K, um, it tells me right away that your system is probably not going to be able to handle it. And uh, I've tried some recordings with it, and it just doesn't do it very well. That's not a limitation of the GPUs. That's a limitation of the FX8370, which I do plan to upgrade to Ryzen probably sometime around Black Friday. I just want to see uh, what prices look like then so anyways uh, back over here to gaming all right so over here in your um, this is your global settings okay and how you set up your global settings is how every game is going to utilize what you set in here so uh, I just leave all this stuff at default except for you want to make sure your AMD crossfire is switched to on okay now once that's on your screen will flicker back and forth and it's like it's installing the video cards and uh, then you if you have uh, you can go to tech power up and download GPU Z one way to know that it's working is if you look down here you'll see that uh, two GPUs are enabled okay and uh, it will also tell you how your bus is working right here so uh, you can click on this little question mark and it'll run a test and you do this render in full screen it'll tell you whether crossfire is working or not um, and what your bus speed is running at so I don't wanna this should be running like on my board it's an Asus 970 Pro Gaming Aura um, in this particular rig so one card will run at uh, PCI Express 16 3.0 and uh, if you're in crossfire they're gonna run at 8 and 2.0 and that's what they should be running at and that's fine you don't lose any performance by running in those um, no video cards are utilizing any higher bandwidth than that right now anyways so I'm gonna go ahead and shut that down I'm not gonna try to run that test while I'm uh, showing you guys this video okay so uh, moving back over here to your this is your global settings and uh, here's your so like I said make sure crossfires on I just leave everything else at uh, default you could put your target frame rate control to 60 frames per second if that's you know if you got a 60 Hertz monitor or 120 if you have a hundred or 144 if you have a 144 Hertz monitor whatever you guys want to do with that I don't even mess with it uh, most games you know ha have some kind of uh, v-sync or limiters in it you know for what you want to do in each particular game so anyways moving on to uh, your global Wattman settings Wattman is a pain in the butt I don't recommend using it the settings are screwy they're jittery but one thing you do want to do is you come in here and just leave everything at default if you're running crossfire you need to set a power limit to plus 50 so you just slide this over and you click apply and then you go over to your second card and you slide it over and you click apply again up there then you hit this little arrow back up here 
and when it brings you back out that will now be your save settings for global so that every game that you play you're going to be using plus 50 power in. Uh, these are your profiles for particular games so let's say I see a lot of people get confused on this they're like oh I see the profile in there if it's not enabled then you're not going to be using it you'll be using your global settings when you try to start up a game in Crossfire. So you come over to say like Battlefield 4, which is a game that scales well in Crossfire. What you wanna do is go down here to the AMD Crossfire mode, click on it, and you'll see there's a default mode, AFR friendly, optimize 1.1, AFR compatible, or you can use a predefined profile. So what you do is click this, and it brings up a whole entire list of games that AMD has made profiles for, which there are quite a few as you can see. Okay, so what we want to do is find Battlefield 4 in this particular case and you click on it. Now, Crossfire is set to use that in particular profile for that game. What you do is you click the arrow to go back here. And now, Battlefield 4 is enabled and set to use that particular profile for that game. So you just do that for every other game that you want to use Crossfire in. Some games refuse to work unless you use a predefined profile. Other games you may have to um, try out the different ones like AFR compatible or Optimize 1.1 or AFR friendly, but it's not too often. So um, anyways, that's how you set your profiles and uh, make sure that they are enabled. And now when you start the game, it will use that profile. And it's also going to use your global settings inside of the profile of your plus 50 power. Now, I use MSI Afterburner not to overclock because in Crossfire, there's really no point in overclocking because the top card is already going to get hot enough as it is. You don't need to add any more to it um to put more you know cause more heat so uh, by setting your plus 50 power which once you open up afterburner this will probably already be set at plus 50 because you have it set in your global settings um, some of the things that you need to do in here go to your settings for afterburner very important for crossfire you need to have disable ulps check Okay, this is, as it states there, it's ultra-low power state mode. It's automatically enabled by default in Windows 10. Uh, I'm pretty sure in Windows 8 and Windows 7. So, make sure that this is checked. And what that does is, if your second card is not being utilized, say you're sitting on the desktop, uh, it drops down into a low power state mode where the... The, uh, it doesn't feed it as many watts and uh, sometimes it can get stuck in that mode um, and not come out of it when you go to play a game. So by doing this, then you'll have to restart Windows, it'll be off and you won't have to worry about it again. If you install new drivers, you need to come back into Afterburner and click this again every time you install new drivers. Uh, other things that you can do in here are go to your monitoring and you can check, uh, uh, well, let me go back to general here. You'll want to do the unlock voltage monitoring, unlock voltage control. Okay, and then go into monitoring, and you will be able to watch your voltage if you want to and see how many uh, watts and volts. Power will show your watts. Voltage will show how many millivolts it's, uh, the cards are being fed. So you always want to make sure that uh, they're definitely getting the power that they need. With Crossfire RX 480s, uh, a 650 watt power supply. Uh, granted, I do have my processor overclocked and I don't have a whole lot of other stuff in the system. Uh, a 650 watt power supply was not enough to run them. It did start them, they would go into games the games would crash or they would lag really bad. Uh, upgraded to a 1000 watt for both rigs. Um, 
both with the RX 480s and RX 580s using a Rosewill Hive 1000 watt. It's only a bronze certified. It only costs about $100. Uh, the results are very good. It's a quiet power supply and uh, it provides the power that they need. Problem solved. Um, so I definitely would not recommend anything under 650. I would say because of the way they were acting where it went into game but then would crash. Um, that the 650 is probably like the bare minimum if you're you know running an overclock processor and I also have a water cooler too so that uses uh, some wattage also so it just depends on what your system set up with but I would definitely recommend at least uh, probably like 800 or above just to be on the safe side all right so that's your settings for afterburner like I said make sure you got that disabled uh, ultra low power savings ULPS make sure that's ticked then you'll have to restart windows okay so when you come in say you're just restarting your computer all right and uh, now afterburner shut down and we're gonna shut down Radeon settings so you start up your computer Radeon settings is set to start with your computer it's gonna show up down here so you just click on that uh, this will bring up your settings and uh, if you don't want to mess around in here uh, then just leave that shut down, open up Afterburner, and you see that the power limit's already set to plus 50. Uh, you can save your profiles here, set that up to make sure it's set to plus 50, and then hit save, and then one, and that'll save all your settings. You can also come into uh, your settings and do a custom fan curve, uh, however you want it set up. It just depends on you know what kind of noise levels you like in your case in particular and all that. So, now you have afterburner set up, uh, you got crossfire configured the right way, and uh, one thing that I do need to add, um, if you're playing an MGPU game, like I said, there's Deus Ex Mankind Divided, um, Hitman, the newest one, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Ashes of the Singularity, and uh, there's one more game that I'm not thinking of. Oh, the Sniper Elite version 4. Any of those games that use MGPU, um, what you need to do is go to your global settings and just turn Crossfire off completely. Or they will not work. So turn it off because those games support Crossfire also in DirectX 11. So if you have it on, it's going to launch in DirectX 11. Go to those games like Rise of the Tomb Raider enable DirectX 12 it's going to ask you to restart the game before you restart the game come in turn your crossfire off then go back in and it will uh, then enable MGPU and have uh, your settings saved and uh, then it will utilize both GPUs in MGPU which uh, serves better for uh, multiple card usage than what DirectX 11 does. So that's about all I got for right now, guys. Um, if you're looking for in particular settings for games or you know need help with a particular one, uh, usually I show the settings on the videos that I make. So if you guys uh, want, you can look at those. I got lots of Crossfire videos on my channel and MGPU ones. I uh, try to show the settings on there so that you know what I'm set up at. But if you have a question or need some help with something, just go ahead and comment. All right, thanks for checking this out, guys.